Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. In this video, uh, there's more going on in the world. This time we're back in Spain. This is after that flooding that took place in central Spain, in uh, Madrid, in Toledo. Now we're in eastern Spain. Uh, this is a new event. So I'm, I'm going to show you what I got. We're going to look at the videos. Um, I'll show you my Google Earth and what I have there. Uh, we're going to be talking about the 144,000. This is something that a lot of people say has not happened yet, and therefore we know that we're not close to the second coming. We haven't seen the 10 tribes return, the 10 lost tribes, and there literally has to be 12,000 exactly from each tribe. That has to be selected, and then they go off on super missions throughout the world, um, and that's how we know that we're close to the second coming. And you guys, that's not, look, <laughs> I, I'm going to show you. If what I'm about to show you does not convince you, I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, I have <clears throat> quotes I'm going to share with you from Joseph Smith, Wilford Woodruff, um, Zadok, Knapp, Judd, and then also Joseph Fielding Smith. Okay. So it's going to make it pretty clear, uh, I think, this whole idea with the 144,000, but that's going to be toward the end or the, like the second half of the video. Um, <clears throat> and then before we get into Spain and that, I uh, just want to show you the church website. Um, I, I was, I was told about this. Okay. Cause th this looks like uh, we've seen this, this painting before. Uh, I can't remember where, but it's shown up somewhere else. Um, but it, it does appear to be a second coming image. Uh, you have Christ, people in modern clothing, and then it looks like angels descending uh, from the sky, uh, what, what you would expect at the second coming. So that's really interesting. Um, I heard about this from two different people. Uh, first, I heard about it from Giant Universe. I'm going to their actual page because... YouTube decided to switch usernames to handles, which is really annoying. Uh, Giant Universe says, go to the church website, look at the picture on the homepage, dot, dot, dot. And then I also got this comment from, from Darren uh, Westensko. Let's see, Westensko. Yeah. And he said, did you see the image with the upcoming general conference tab on Gospel Library? And yeah, it, this is what it is. It's the same thing. So that's kind of exciting. You know, they just put this second coming picture up on the church website and on the Gospel Library app um, as we are now uh, less than a month from General Conference. Exciting stuff. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so what do we got? Well, I have three new um cities but they're also it's not just these cities they're, these are just kind of like the main cities in these areas that are being affected uh and these are just the ones that I can confirm i have two spanish cities molina de segura and castellon and then also perpignan i think this is perpignan i think that with this the g and the n i think it's nya so perpignan france uh which is is close to spain so um as I'm about to show you in the, in the videos, it's the same type of flash flooding that is sweeping away cars and um, dumpsters. And it's just the same thing that we've seen in all these other places. Uh, all this month we had, um, well, and then into, into last month too, but let's just start here. So we had Guadalajara, Mexico on the 31st of August. Uh, we had Madrid, Spain. And then we have the state of Rio Grande de do Sul in Brazil. And then we had Athens, Greece, and other places in Greece as well. Bulgaria, Istanbul, Turkey. And then we have uh, this big one that's taking place right now. Don't even know the outcome of it. Uh, the death toll is going up and up and up in Libya, in Tunisia. Uh, we saw the same thing in Gateshead, United Kingdom on the 10th, uh, Bobai, China on the 11th, as well as 
Someone told me that it's Le Monster. That's how they pronounce it over there. And, and of course, you know, because English, uh, it's not like we have ways of spelling things the way that they sound, but uh, either Leo Minster or Le Monster, Massachusetts. And now two more places in Spain, in France. This is all within just like a couple of weeks. Let's take a look at Google Earth. <clears throat> and uh, this is the... This is roughly the affected area. Um, you'll see when we start looking at the the X posts that it's going to say Valencia, but that's because Castellon is in the province of uh, Valencia. Uh, there's a city of Valencia, and I actually I served here. This is where I ended my mission. I was there for six months. I actually ended up naming our daughter Valencia after this city. It's a beautiful city, but in the province of Valencia up here is Castellon. And uh, this is the area that we're going to see some video of. Now, I've also seen video before this started happening. I was seeing some video, and I've showed it to you uh, in previous videos. Uh, stuff happen happening up here in Santander and uh, Bilbao. And then also, I can't remember if Santander is part of País Basco, but there's another part over here called Asturias, and uh, I saw a video from there too, but I haven't been able to verify the storms up here. Uh, once I do, then I'll add it to the map. All that I've been able to verify are these three as of right now. It, it may be because it's too recent. I, I don't know, but anyway. So let's go ahead. Let's go to X, and then just, just so you can see, just so you can see that I did my due, my due diligence. Uh, these are the different, <clears throat> excuse me, these are the different uh, articles uh, that I used to verify that this did actually take place. Because whenever I see something on X, you know, I want to make sure it's not just somebody posting like an old video because I've seen that happen before where somebody's like, oh, look what's happening in Saudi Arabia. Look what's happening there. And it turns out to be a video from like last year or two years ago or something like that. So that's why I always want to verify it. I can't just go off of, you know, posts on X. But here's the one in Murcia. Um, this is the one for France. And I'll put all the links in the in the description below if you want to verify this yourself. Here's the, the another one for the for France, you know. Um this one is also France and and just like that video gosh, dang it, where was it? I already forgot. Like within the last couple of videos, we were looking at, at a video on X that showed a, a mall uh, in Chile. I think it was in Chile that was flooding. And there was a girl inside of a store that, <laughs> that was like trying to push like um, pieces of cardboard over <laughs> this like this like drain or something where like the water was coming up through the store. Anyway, we've seen uh, Hong Kong. They had a shopping mall that was flooded. Chile. Now we have this uh, store right here in France. Um, this one is also France. This one is Castellon in Valencia. And this one, it talks about Murcia. Okay. So, all right. So this first video in Nules in eastern Spain uh, and I looked this up. This is near. Oh, sorry for, no, this yeah, this is near uh, Castellon. All right, pretty intense. Uh, you can tell the person is struggling to to hold the phone upright, but there's you know just stuff flying all over. It looks like some hail, maybe rain. I'm not sure. Very intense winds. Uh, here's a new video of Libya. All right. <clears throat> Now back to Spain, uh, Luis Aquerias of Valencia, Spain. So more of that, just like really uh, harsh wind, and then you can see some hail. Uh, this is in Boriana, uh, which is in the Valencia area. And it's, I don't know, it's doing damage to this structure, whatever this is, some kind of warehouse it looks like. My goodness. Um, another new video from Libya. I don't think this is right. 
Uh, this is B&O News, and they're usually pretty good. But I don't think officially the death toll has reached uh, 5,300. But I don't know. Maybe they have some other source. But gosh, if it goes up to 5,300 or above, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, this is in Castellon in Nulis. And here you have a guy that, holy cow, he <laughs> he's okay. Uh, but you can see that tree fell right on his car. But thank goodness he's okay. I guess he's going to have to wait for somebody to uh, come with some chainsaws to free him. All right. Here we go. This is in Molina de Segura of Murcia province. And uh, this is just, here come the, the dumpsters. Here they come. Uh, there always has to be the dumpsters floating down the street. But th this is in Spain. This is today. This is today. All right. Moving on. This is in Maestrat. Cati in Maestra, I don't know. <clears throat> it's probably it's Valencian. Uh, in the east of Spain, they have there. There's different languages in Spain. It's not just Spanish. You have Basque. You also have Gallego. You have um, Catalan, and you have Valencian, which is basically <clears throat> it, it's basically Catalan, but it's like a dialect. It's essentially the same thing. There's some differences, but anyway, got that. A uh, huge hail in uh, Amorebieta of Biscay, Spain. And that's some pretty good size hail. It looks like it's the size of like baseballs or tennis balls. All right, so you have that. Uh, this is in Correa of Navarre, Spain. Uh, this is up in that Basque area. But I can't verify this. I haven't seen anything talking about this area. I don't. I don't. I don't doubt it. it disaster news. This account usually seems to be pretty on top of it. So, but I want to just be able to verify it myself before I put it on my spreadsheets. Uh, oh yeah, and then there's this. Uh, supposedly, this is happen happening in the Netherlands, in uh, Maastricht, in the in the Netherlands just more you know uh, i'm gonna have to check tomorrow and and you know see if there's any stories about this oh yeah look at the difference here <clears throat> uh in this um what is this city oh yeah derna this is derna in libya before and then after the flooding before and after an, an entire city just devastated all right, this is in uh, Molina de Segura. More dumpsters coming. Gosh. Here's like a radar of it. So there's that. Uh, this is in... <clears throat> so, well, we, we already saw this. That's what we started with. Sorry, sometimes I lose track. Here's another video of that same city in the Netherlands. Uh, if you're in the Le Netherlands, let me know. Uh, if you've been to the Netherlands, let me know. Put it in the comments. Or if you've been in any of these cities, let me know. Put it in the comments below. I'd like to know. Um, <clears throat> I'd really like to know if any of you could verify this if you're currently living there. I, I do have viewers from Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands. All right, here's France, and you, you can see it's it's bad up there. This is uh, Shativa, Spain. This is uh, closer to. Well, let me. I can't remember exactly. I know that there was like a train station. I can't remember. Okay, whatever. I I don't know exactly where this is. I recognize the name for my mission, but it's been a long time. Train station. In Shativa, Spain, this evening. All right. Here is <clears throat> France again. Video from France. Here's another before and after. 
in uh, Derna in Libya. It really looks like a like a bomb went off. And it's it's not just like like the lower like the ground level. It, it, like when you look at these buildings, it it almost looks like they've been like well, some of them have collapsed. I know that. That's probably why some of them look that way. Yeah, it must be because some of them collapsed. That's just unbelievable. This is in France. This is in Derna. It says, my cousin in Derna just sent me this, um, just sent me this. The coastal road bridge collapsed. Yeah. Looks like there's a bridge that would have gone across that. Now it's collapsed. Look at these buildings. Uh, well, maybe that's okay. I can't tell if that's just like the angle, but it looked like there was some structural da damage. Uh, this is in Humia. Here's Derna at night, uh, looking like a horror story. Or like from a like this is from a horror movie. That is really creepy and very sad and depressing. Oh, supermarket in Shativa. All right. Where is it? Oh, yeah, this is, this is also in France. This is up in France. Roads being turned into rivers. Another before and after. Another one in Shativa. Looks like a roundabout. Anyway, oh, okay, that's it. <clears throat> that's it. So, again, that's what this area looks like, at least a few locations. Haven't heard anything about Barcelona. Um, just these three cities. And uh, I'm sure that we'll hear, we'll hear more about it tomorrow. So, this is what... Let me turn off August... This is what September looks like right now. A lot of devastation in the Mediterranean, both in North Africa and in Europe, primarily in, in Southern Europe. But there was this one up in the UK, and possibly tomorrow I'll be able to verify the one in uh, the Netherlands. We'll see. All right. Um, also, I don't know if this is on your radar, but Hurricane Lee... Uh, we talked about this a little while ago. This is the hurricane that strengthened to a Category 5. Um, it was only a Category 5 for a short while. Uh, this is still a threat. Um, let, me, let me read you some of the stuff from this article from NPR. Lee is currently a Category 3 hurricane, according to the National Hurricane Center. It's also much larger than it was just a few days ago. Lee's hurricane force winds extend up to 90 miles from its center with tropical storm force winds extending some 205 miles. Uh, compare that to last Friday when its hurricane force winds extended 35 miles out. So if we're just talking about hurricane force winds, it went from 35 miles out to 90 miles out. So yeah, that that is, I don't know, that seems like quite a bit of growth let's go to zoom earth and this is what zoom earth has right now they have it at a category three and uh you can see the the path uh well before it was looking more optimistic but it looks like it's gonna uh brush by boston uh and then maine uh and then it's gonna come really close to halifax uh, the, the capital of Nova Scotia. And then obviously there's these other uh, cities here. There's um, Fredericton, the, the capital of New Brunswick. So if you, let me know if you're living up there, put it in the comments below. And then immediately after that, go make sure that you have <clears throat> supplies, uh, food, whatever you need, have a, a plan of action in place. But it looks like this is headed towards you in Nova Scotia. New Brunswick, that area. And then also, and then Maine, and then and then even potentially Boston, Rhode Island, who knows? New Hampshire, maybe a little bit. 
And the thing about it is that by this point, <clears throat> the forecast has it at a category one going over this. So it's not like it's going to weaken uh, to a tropical storm or something or something like that. It's the forecast right now has it at a category one as it crosses uh, this part of Canada. All right, so let's go back to the article. Um, the current forecast track shows Lee Center moving uh, toward New Brunswick, Canada, <clears throat> but along the way, its winds could reach sh shores from New York to Maine. Quote. It remains too soon to know what level of additional impacts Lee might have along the northeastern U.S. coast and Atlantic Canada late this week and this weekend, the NHC said on Tuesday. Um, with such a massive storm, Lee's eye wall doesn't have to make landfall or come within 100 miles of the shore to make an impact on land. Even in, in areas that remain far from the, stores, the storm's core, the NHC, NHC said, uh, since wind and rainfall hazards will extend well away from the center as Lee grows in size, users should continue to monitor updates to Lee's forecast during the next several days. And that's all that I have for that. Um, I have this other website, uh, cyclocane.com, where they have, you know, they have their, they have these spaghetti models, and this is what it looks like right now. It's it's pretty solidly going over this area, pretty much, uh, no, you know, any way that you look at it. There's this one that takes it over Maine, so but it seems like most of them just kind of generally take it up this area. So say prayers. For them, uh, if you're in that area, please follow the promptings of the Spirit. Make sure that you're prepared. Listen to your local news and uh, authorities. All right, and I think that's all. Yeah, that's all that I have. So let's go ahead and let's move on, and let's talk about the hundred and forty-four thousand. Okay, so uh, like I said, I wanted to go back through the different. Uh, things that I have here under my quotes, common misconceptions spreadsheet. Uh, in the last video, we covered uh, how does our church view 666 or 666. Um, it's not something that we really talk about so much nowadays, but uh, they, definitely, they definitely had uh, a, a, a pretty solid definition in mind uh, when they spoke about it back in the days of Wilford Woodruff, Brigham Young, and so on. So I'm going to go through all these misconceptions and I'm glad that I am because when I was, when I was doing this one, I realized that I was missing a few things. Uh, and so I added them. Uh, I have like three new, uh, three new quotes and I uh, should have updated this. This is Joseph Fielding Smith. And then this one down here is from the church one of the church manuals. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So before we get into the misconceptions, let's read the scriptures first. Uh, there's two, there's two scriptures I want to read. Uh, some verses from Revelation seven and then from Revelation 14. They have to do with the, the 144,000. All right, so John also sees in the sixth seal the restoration of the gospel, the sealing of the 144,000, and the hosts of the exalted from all nations. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. This is important right here, these four angels, okay? This is going to play in to the idea of the 144,000 because notice the order of events, so these four angels holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I numbered, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, 
and there were sealed in 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. All right, so you get that? The angels were not allowed to hurt the earth or do their work until the 144,000 were first sealed. And once they were, then they could. Okay? Remember that. And now, let's go to Revelation 14. The Lamb will stand upon Mount Zion. The gospel will be restored in the last days by angelic ministry. The Son of Man will harvest the earth. And I looked, and lo, a Lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an 144,000, having his Father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. And these are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. We're going to look at what that means, virgins. Because <clears throat> this is something that people interested in, in the second coming... They'll read the book of Revelation themselves and then interpret this themselves and then start playing the matching game like, oh, I think that this means da 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 da, or this is how I picture it, which is not the right way to go about it. You should read it for yourself, but then you should search and see if our church has an interpretation of that prophecy. And they do. So, anyway, virgins, right? You, you would typically think, oh, a virgin, someone that hasn't engaged in uh, that that particular activity. So they can't they can't have been married. So we know we know that the 144,000 they're not married, right? They're not married yet. Or if they are, then they haven't consummated the the marriage. All right, continuing, these are they which follow the lamb with her so with her soever he goeth. Uh, these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God into the lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Okay, so let's go to the Bible dictionary to get a definition for what virgins mean. Okay, because the, the Bible dictionary has something to say about that. So, oh, sorry, this is under um, guide to the scriptures. I'm sorry. A man or woman of marriageable age who has never had sexual intercourse. In the scriptures, a virgin may represent someone who is morally clean. So instead of this first definition right here, <laughs> uh, it, it's just somebody who is morally clean in other contexts. And specifically, Specifically, they cite uh, Revelation 14, 4, which we just read. And these are they, <clears throat> or these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. They are, the, they are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Because, <clears throat> as one theory goes, well, they're going to be missionaries. Uh, they're going to be special missionaries, 12,000 from each tribe. And of course, you know, to be a missionary, uh, or at least like when you go the first time, like um, proselyting missions, uh, you're not married yet, right? Only senior couples are married. But uh, proselyting missionaries, they're not married. And so therefore, this is what this is talking about. No, no, it's not. Not necessarily. It doesn't have to be someone that hasn't had um, these kind of relations. Okay? So there's that. Uh, this is something that you need to understand before we get into the rest of it. All right, now let's go and let's read the quotes. I'm going to zoom in. The first one is from Joseph Smith. Okay? And the misconception, of course, is we haven't seen the 144,000 yet. Okay, Joseph Smith, <clears throat> this is what he said. This can be found in the Joseph Smith papers, 
Um, I have the, you know, the reference right here, including the link, uh, if you want to go there directly. But I copied it over, and this is what he said. Okay. And this is talking about the, the quorum of the 70. This is the context, okay? So Joseph Smith says, if the first 70 are all employed and there is a call for more laborers in the vineyard, it will be the duty of the seven presidents of the first 70 to call and ordain other 70 and send, th send them forth to, to labor until, if need be, they set apart seven times 70. Now, again, uh, in case you watched the, the, the last video that I did talking about this, hopefully you recognize that phrase, seven times 70, because that's something that the Savior said when he was answering um, his apostles' question about how many times should I forgive my, uh, my brother, my neighbor? Uh, should it be seven times? And then Christ says, not seven times, but seven times 70. And he wasn't giving a literal number. He wasn't saying, okay, once you get to 490, you're good. You've, you've forgiven him enough. Now, you know, you don't need to forgive him. Okay. In the scriptures, when they talk about numbers, they can be literal. Sometimes they're more figurative and they're symbolic because they carry a certain meaning. Right? We know, for example, that 12 is a number that represents uh, Israel. Uh, it also represents the priesthood. Okay. And when you, in, in Judaism, when you do things with numbers, when you add numbers, when you, when you times numbers by themselves, by themselves, when you add a thousand, for example, then uh, it adds more meaning to the concept that you're trying to convey. So for the 144,000, John describing the last days, describing uh, the priesthood, the high priest, because that's another thing, they're high priests. It's like, it's, like, it's like saying in the future, it's going to be crazy. There's going to be, take 12 times 12 and add a thousand. That's what it's going to be like, right? So anyway, and I don't know, it could be a literal number too. But that is one way that they use numbers. They talk about numbers uh, a lot of times symbolically uh, for their, their meaning, their symbolic uh, meaning. So anyway, so Joseph Smith says, okay, after, you know, if you need more than, than the first quorum of the 70, then call another one. And if needs be, set apart seven times 70. And even until there are 144,000 thus set apart to the ministry. The 70 are not to attend the conferences of the 12 unless they are called upon or requested so to do by the 12. So that's a very interesting hint, don't you think? Because we know that if you're in the 70, you first have to be a high priest and uh, you have to be a virgin by this definition, someone who is morally clean, so I think it's starting to kind of make sense. And uh, <clears throat> the 70, they, they, they're they involved with missionary work. In, in those early days, they were actual missionaries that went out and they proselyted. Um, but they're still, they're still involved in that. And we did a, a whole video about that. Okay, now let's go on to the next one. You can find this in History of the Church. And by the way, all seven volumes of History of the Church is on BYU's website. Uh, you can read the entire thing. This is from volume six, page 196. All right, Sunday 4th. I attended prayer meeting with the quorum in, this, in the assembly room and made some remarks respecting the 144,000 mentioned by John the Revelator, showing that the selection of persons to form that number had already commenced. So it's not something that has not started yet. Like, oh, we haven't even seen this yet because the 10 lost tribes aren't, you know, back from their hiding place. No, it already started at the time of Joseph Smith. This is in his, in his journal. It's in his diary. And then he continues, President, Brism, Pres, President Brigham Young held a meeting at Brother Chamberlain's in the neighborhood north of the city and Elder Wilford Woodruff at Thomas Kingston's six miles east of the city. 
All right. So we don't have a whole lot more information, I don't think, about this selection process that he's referring to. But he's saying that the selection process had already begun back during his own time. Okay, next, <clears throat> next, we're going to go to uh, President Wilford Woodruff. This is in 1894, and it's a year after the Salt Lake Temple was dedicated. Okay, a year after the Salt Lake Temple was dedicated. You can find this in the Temple Workers Excursion article in the Young Woman's Journal, August 19, 1894. And I actually have that pulled up. All right, I'll put the link for this in the description below. But here you go. Temple Workers Excursion, <coughs> President Lorenzo Snow. Go down to page, I think it's 512. Let me exit out of that. That's 511. Okay, 512. So the context of this is um, just like it sounds. <clears throat> there was a temple workers excursion. It's like they took all the temple workers uh, from the Salih Temple and they had an outing, you know, for spiritual upliftment and uh, or a spiritual up uplifting and um, whatever. They, they had different activities. They took a train to this place and there was, I think there was like camping and stuff like that. So they got to this point where they were having a testimony meeting. And, and during this testimony meeting, this is when President Woodruff says the following. Okay, President Woodruff was filled with the... Okay, let me zoom in just a little bit more. President Woodruff was filled with the power and influence of the Holy Ghost on this occasion. So much so that it not only thrilled his own voice, but shook the hearts of his hearers. He began his remarks by saying, quote... I should not try to speak to this congregation tonight, as I have spoken twice before today, but there are duties resting upon me that I must attend to. And I want to ask this congregation a question. When I have the vision of the night opened continually before my eyes and can see the mighty judgments that are about to be poured out upon this world, when I know these things are true and are at the door of Jew and Gentile, while I know they are true and while I am holding this position before God in this world, can I withhold my voice from lifting up a warning to this people and to the nations of the earth? I mean, I may never meet with this people again. I, I cannot tell uh, how that may be. Sorry. I cannot tell how that may be, but while I live and see these things continually before my eyes, I shall raise my warning voice. Now, the question I want to ask you is this. We have 14 million people on this earth. And of course, I, I think that's right. Back in the 1800s, I'm sure there was more than 14 million. So I don't know. Um, and over them, over them all, there hangs a cloud of darkness almost entirely upon their, their shoulders. Can you tell me where the people are who will be shielded and protected from these great calamities and judgments which are even now at our doors. I'll tell you, the priests of God uh, who honor their priesthood and who are worthy of their blessings are the only ones who shall have this safety and protection. They are the only mortal beings. No other people have a right to be shielded from these judgments. They are at our very doors. Not even this people will escape them entirely. They will come down like the judgments of Sodom and Gomorrah, and none but the priesthood will be safe from their fury. God has, okay, now this is the key part. Remember the four angels? Do you remember the four angels um, in Revelation 7 where they wanted to bring judgment upon the earth, but the fifth angel from the east rose up and said, nope, you can't do that until the 144,000 have been sealed. Okay, well, look what Wilford Woodruff said. And again, he's the president of the church at this time. And he is referring to those four angels, as you're about to see in another quote. Um, he doesn't explicitly say it here, but Joseph Fielding Smith 
he confirmed that that's what he's talking about. He's talking specifically about those four angels in the book of Revelation. Okay, this is what he says. God has held the angels of destruction for many years, lest they should reap down the wheat with the tares. But I want to tell you now that those angels have left the portals of heaven and they stand over this people and this nation now and are hovering over the earth, waiting to pour out the judgments. And from this very day, they shall be poured out. Calamities and troubles are increasing in the earth, and there is a meaning to these things. And then that's that's all I'm going to read. Uh, you can read the rest if you want to. Okay. But he talks about the fact that up until this point, they, they haven't been able to bring judgments upon the earth, but now they are from this very day. Okay. Let's go back to my spreadsheet. Uh, we'll skip Zadok nap Judd for now. We'll, we'll come back to that. Um, and we'll actually skip to the last one. Okay. So now this is in, this is in the, the, the uh, student manual for doctrine and covenants. And I have that pulled up right here so you can see it. President Joseph Fielding Smith, who was present when President Wilford Woodruff talked about these angels at the dedication of the Salt Lake Temple, recorded the following. As far as I know, this is the only place where we find out that it was at, it was at the dedication of the Salt Lake Temple that he said this about the angels. And it would seem that the full account is in this book, Signs of the Times, uh, pages 112 to 113. And uh, this is what that book looks like. You can get it on Amazon. I, I really wish that this was on archive.org because then I could just go there. But um, anyway, this is the book that you find this in. And they put it, they put it in the Doctrine and Covenants student manual for section 86, the parable of the wheat and the tares. Okay, so now uh, this next part, I, I have this as a separate quote on my spreadsheet, and I'll just, I'll read it from my spreadsheet. But again, this is from Signs of the Times by Joseph Fielding Smith. Okay, he says, I want to make some comments in regard to the statement by President, by President Woodruff in this parable, the parable of the wheat and the tares in DNC 86. The Lord said that the sending forth of these angels was to be at the end of the harvest, and the harvest is the end of the world. Now, that ought to cause us some very serious reflections. And the angels have been pleading, as I have read it to you, before the Lord to be sent on their mission. Until 1893, that's the year that the Salih Temple was dedicated, until 1893, the Lord said to them, No. And then he set them loose. According to the revelation of President Wilford, uh, sorry, according to the revelation of President Woodruff, the Lord sent them out on that mission. Again, remember what has to take place before they, they can be sent out. The 144,000 have to be sealed in their foreheads. And Joseph Smith, Joseph Smith Jr., he said that the selection process had already begun. And he also made another really interesting statement about uh, 70s and the number, their number, you know, reaching 144,000 if needs be. So you see what, I, you see what I'm getting at here? Um, <clears throat> it seems like it's already taken place and it's not according to some of these other theories that no, we know the second coming isn't close because we haven't even seen this yet. Well, I can understand why you would think that, but now that you have this, you know, and this is in, in official church publications, it's in the, the Doctrine and Covenants student manual, um, hopefully you realize that it's already taken place. And it, it could be like an ongoing thing. I mean, maybe every person that becomes a 70 joins that group, or I, I have no idea how it works. Maybe it includes the apostles and the prophet themselves. I don't know. I don't know. We don't have all the answers, but what we do know 
from this is that it's already at least begun, you know? All right, so let me read the last part. What what do we gather out of that? That we are at the time of the end. This is the time of the harvest. This is the time spoken of, which is called the end of the world. All right, and then we'll end it with uh, this. This is from <clears throat> Zadok Knapp Judd. Uh, this is actually from a, uh, a thesis. Um, you can find this on scholarsarchive.byu. This is by Daryl Wesley Judd. The name of the paper is Zadok Knapp Judd, Soldier, Colonizer, Missionary to the Lamanites. Okay, and if you double click on this or you copy it onto your document, it has the, the link uh, for the website. Okay, so he says, <clears throat> Difficult as it was for Zadok's mother to provide food for her family, she never forgot about her spiritual about their spiritual welfare. To help promote their religious growth, she took Zadok and the other boys to the patriarch, Joseph Smith Sr., and each received a blessing. Because of their poor financial condition, they did not pay for the blessing to be recorded, and the boys never received copies of them. It was an important experience for them, however, and 12-year-old Zadok remembered the occasion and some of the promises throughout his life. He said, quote, he told me my name was recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life and angels had charge to watch over me continually and that I was one of the 144,000 that should stand as saviors upon Mount Zion in the latter days. So there you go. Um, of course, that's according to his memory. This isn't as strong of, a, of an argument, um, but... I think it should be taken into consideration, especially what we know that Joseph Smith said about the 144,000, the selection process has already started. And then both Wilford Woodruff and Joseph Fielding Smith saying that the, those angels had been released and knowing that those angels could not be released until the 144,000 had the seal of God in their foreheads. Uh, it would seem to me that, that it's already underway or maybe completely taken place for all I know. And, uh, of course, when we're talking about seal being sealed in your forehead, when you go to, uh, you know, the Institute manuals, it's not like a literal seal of like gold or like a branding or a tattoo or something like that. Uh, just think about the temple. If you've been to the temple, you've had your initiatories, right? Um, just think about your forehead, and we read in the manuals that when we're talking about foreheads or we're talking about hands, you know, like the opposite of this would be the mark of the beast, either in your forehead or in your hand. It's not a literal microchip or barcode. It's your thoughts and your actions. You have like the, the two different sides. You have Babylon. You have the, the beast system. Are you a worldly person? Do you have worldly things in your mind? Do you do worldly things? Or are you the opposite? And you have uh, the Lord, you have the gospel in your mind and on your forehead or whatever. And are those the kind of uh, things that you do, you know, your actions? So um, anyway, that, that that's it. And there's not really a whole lot else said about the 144,000 if you read Bruce R. McConkie's Millennial Messiah, he talks about how they'll be with Christ, you know, on the Mount of Olives, and that's pretty pretty clear. Um, in fact, that that's kind of nice. That brings us back to this. Um, what we've read, you know, when you read the scriptures about Christ coming to the Mount of Olives, it talks about how he's going to come with the saints. He's going to come with those that have been resurrected, uh, the righteous that have been resurrected, um, to a celestial glory. And then those that are upon the earth that are alive will be quickened and come with him. So anyone that's part of the 144,000, uh, they'll be resurrected. Um, and if there's in, if that includes people today, like general authorities or whoever, then obviously they would be there too, along with everybody else, 
all the righteous. Um, okay, that's going to be it for this one. If you want to dig into this more, I did a, I did a, a like an hour and a half video, um, uh, kind of going into more detail about the stuff that we just covered. Um, so if you're interested in that, I'll put that in the description below. But let me know your thoughts on this. Um, I, 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 I guarantee there's going to be someone that says, well, I mean, couldn't it be that it's already started, but then it's not going to like happen in full until the 10 lost tribes come? You know, I don't, <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no convincing some people when it comes to the 10 lost tribes. I just want to point out really quick, I have a playlist or I have a, a spreadsheet for the 10 lost tribes where I've collected all the quotes. I haven't, people have submitted numerous quotes to me about the 10 lost tribes and I've done my own searching. These are all the ones that I know about. The ones that are red or pink are in favor of there's not a main group. There's not a main hidden group. When you go back in time, before 1971, you start to see, you start to see people uh, that do say that they're in a hidden group. There's a pretty clean cut. There's a pretty clean line, mostly between 1967 and 1971. Something changes at that point. Um, and you have to explain that. And I've never, ever, 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 ever heard anybody give a good explanation as to why the early church believed in the Ten Last Tribes being a, a main group that's still homogenous and in the hollow earth or in outer space or in a cavern somewhere. Why there is a, um, where, why there are contradictory statements and why it's so cleanly along these lines where something changes around the year 1967 to 1971, where before that point, they're like, yes, yes, yes. And then after that point, they're like, no, no, no. And <laughs> the only thing that I ever hear anybody say is like, well, it's their opinion. It's their opinion. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Not when it's repeated over and over again and when it follows this pattern. Okay. What I do know is that I'm taking all of it into consideration. I know what William J. Critchlow Jr. said. I know what Spencer W. Kimball said. I know what Marky e. Peterson, Joseph Fielding Smith, uh, Ezra Taft. Why is this not color coded? I'll have to go back to that. Um, Orson F. Whitney, James E. Talmadge. Wilford Woodruff, Orson Pratt, Benjamin F. Johnson. But then we have Joseph Smith at the very beginning where it's it's a no. It's it's against the idea of the Ten Lost Tribes being a main group that's still together hidden somewhere. You take all of it into consideration. You can't just ignore the part that you don't like. You have to be like, why is there a discrepancy? And I think the reason why is because the Lord reveals things line upon line, precept upon precept. And you should go with the most recent revelation, the most recent sayings of the prophets and the apostles, because in all likelihood, something was clarified at some point. And then they're like, oh, okay. Anyway, okay, that's going to be it. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.